but it's really just bringing the wind right now and not really bringing the moisture just yet. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Comstock Channel. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. So glad you could join us for today's episode. I appreciate that very much. If you would, take a moment and uh, like these videos, subscribe to the videos down below, and you can share these with others as well. We appreciate all the help. Well, today, my very special guest is Laura Edwards, the South Dakota State Climatologist. She is kind of a regular contributor here from time to time. And uh, Laura, I really wanted to visit with you today because last time we talked, we were talking about the really dry winter that you guys had in the Dakotas, the whole northern plains. And the, uh, excuse me, Nebraska has been really dry. Uh, parts of northwest Iowa have been dry, uh, parts of Minnesota. I understand you may have a big uh, uh, storm system possibly coming through here in a couple of days. But I just wondered if that's going to be enough to put a damper in that drought or not. I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about that. Over the last, you know, six, seven weeks or so here in the Dakotas, eastern Dakotas in particular, we, re we received some beneficial rainfall, you know, at that really critical time uh, after the snow season has mostly ended and where crops and uh, natural vegetation hadn't quite gotten off to, to a good start yet. So I say almost at end of the snow season because that there was a rain and snow event right on April 2nd, end of March, early April, that actually brought uh, some of the biggest snowfalls of the season <laughs> to parts of South Dakota. And uh, that actually improved our soil moisture, at least shallow soil moisture, uh, quite a bit. And uh, I, again, I think that and some other rain events late between late March and, and through April and early May really uh, helped us get those the shallow soils off to a good start. So if you look at the U.S. Drought Monitor, there are a lot of areas where there's one to two categories of improvement over the last, you know, several weeks. And that's really reflecting short-term improvement. But now I think we're really more at a, what I characterize as a tipping point, um, where we've had that soil moisture, at least shallow layers, but our subsoil didn't really fully recover. We're still carrying over some residual dry conditions from last summer, you know, through the fall and winter, as you talked about in your opening remarks. And uh, we're awaiting, you know, kind of the next big rain. And so we're hoping that comes this week here uh, with some higher amounts expected, you know, some potentially severe, hopefully it's not too severe, but uh, hopefully some good moisture amounts that can replenish that shallow soil at the top soil at least, and hopefully get a little bit deeper into helping our subsoil. And I think this is going to be the story for the rest of the season, Marlon, where we're really going to be relying on events, you know, uh, that are really timely and, uh, you know, hopefully just kind of almost spoon feeding us, you know, right when we need it, because we're carrying over uh, such deficits from the last really couple of years in this region. Did I hear correctly that you had... Uh basically all four seasons here in the last week or the current week right now? We're seeing a lot of it, yeah. Um, I don't know that we're going to see too much winter part, but uh, we've had record high temperatures on Mother's Day or near record highs, uh, very high winds at that same time uh, with highs in the 90s, winds uh, averaging in the 30s, gusting up to 50 to 60 mile an hour range. Um, we've had highs in the 90s, I think, now. We're going on three three or four days in a row here by the time this comes to an end. And um, looking out ahead uh, this weekend, uh, along with the, the rainfall forecast that I, that I mentioned, we also see some forecast lows in the 30s and 40s uh, in, in parts of the Dakotas, you know, most of North Dakota and and a lot of South Dakota will be in the 30s and 40s. So, um, yeah, we're kind of getting this weather whiplash <laughs> both ways uh, all, all throughout one week. How did the farmers get along as far as putting the crops in this year? Uh, I know there for a while they were maybe holding off because they thought it was too dry. But overall, do you think they got the crops in like they should? 
Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, some really good planting progress over the last week and a half or so. Uh, you know, in, in eastern South Dakota, at least the last uh, measurable rainfall was around May 1st, May 2nd, something like that. So especially the last week, I saw a lot of farm activity going on. Uh, some people did get planted before that, um, in, you know, in late April, uh, but a lot of farm activity going on. Uh, over the last week or so, and uh, there's a lot of corn and soybeans, I think, that are going to be ready to emerge here pretty soon. I think the moisture in April uh, really saved our winter wheat crop. You know, some of those areas are really quite dry. Um, getting into late April, I think that really was a, a life a game changer for them, and some of those small grains, too. I think um, we might not have a good handle on the last week that's been really dry and windy if that's um, had much of a negative impact in small grains. Uh, I think that's still yet to be determined, you know, again, with the rainfall that we're expecting here in the next seven days. So how widespread do you think this upcoming storm event would be? Would it cover everything from the Canadian border through all of Nebraska, or is it more limited? Yeah, we're seeing um, for the next seven-day forecast uh, from NOAA's Weather Prediction Center, uh, really good rains um, from, yeah, the Canadian Prairie all the way down into northern Nebraska, I'll say, um, maybe a little bit along the east eastern side of Nebraska. Um, the further south you get, though, beyond that, uh, you know, lesser amounts are forecast, but for a lot of North Dakota and South Dakota, Western Minnesota, we're looking at rainfall totals in the next seven days around an inch and a half uh, to two inches in the wetter area, which is more in northern North Dakota, right along the Canadian border. Um, but again, we can see some locally heavy, heavier events or heavier areas, you know, given this is a summertime you know, where you get those thunderstorms that, that can drop really intense rainfall for a period. So um, not counting out um, parts of South Dakota or northern Nebraska as well for some of those heavier amounts that could be closer to two inches or so in the next seven days. Oh, and that would be over a period of a few different events, but it really looks like changing, you know, Wednesday night um, is kind of where we're going to start to see more chances of rainfall and um then, you know, continuing chances through the weekend into early next week. What about into Iowa and Minnesota? Yeah, western Minnesota, I think, will benefit uh, from some of the, the storm activity coming up here in the next five to seven days. And, uh, you know, Iowa, you know, looking closer in that, in that seven-day period, kind of a little further out. So a little less certainty there, but really more and Northwestern Iowa has the higher chances there around six or seven days from now. And uh, so Eastern Iowa, I think, uh, still might be a little bit more on the drier side, uh, currently looking at, you know, less than a half an inch or so in the next seven days. Uh, but as we look out, you know, towards you know, oh, one to two weeks from now, getting closer to the end of uh, end of May, we do see some increased chances for that the eastern Iowa and, and Corn Belt, you know, Ohio River Basin to get some more rainfall there. Um, I know some of those areas have had <laughs> had about enough rainfall for a little bit, but uh, they do look favored to be wetter. Uh, on the wetter side of things, um, in eight to fourteen days from now. Well, I know I have. Uh, continually heard about a dry pocket in an unusual place, and that's in the uh, northern fourth of Illinois, of all places. Just kind of a hole of the donut right there. <clears throat> you go southwest of Chicago, and I just wondered if they're going to be able to benefit from this storm system much or not. Some say that it may kind of miss them again. That's kind of what I'm seeing here, too, looking at the, the rainfall forecast for the next seven days. Uh, that area seems to not quite catch anything really until seven days out and maybe a little after that, you know, seven to ten days out. Um, and again, that's pretty far uh, in the future for, you know, looking at a specific location like that. But you're right, I have heard the same comments from my extension colleagues across the region last week where there's a, that kind of funny pocket there. 
on the Wisconsin Illinois border that's a little bit drier than the surrounding area. Now, in your opinion, um, when you look at the rain coming in here uh, and the rainfall totals that are projected, do you consider this uh, to be a drought buster? Because from what I understand behind this next system, it might turn dry again. And I've heard anecdotal stories earlier, uh, Laura, from, uh, well, let's say maybe a month or so ago, where there were dry areas that got two inches of rain and the dust was blowing the next day already because uh, it just disappeared right away. What's your take on that? I mean, how much time would this system buy us? Yeah, I, I think it can buy us a fair amount, but I don't know that it'll put an end to everything. You know, we're still carrying some decent deficits of moisture. For the month of May already, it's been very dry uh, across much of the pl of the Northern Plains region. And so, you know, e even if we get two inches rain, which would be great, our average around this time of year is about an inch a week almost, you know, three quarters to an inch a week. So... Um, that might keep us up to average for the month of May and certainly be beneficial in the short term. But uh, we really, I, I think we really need some consistent moisture over a longer period of time. Um, but again, you know, there's a lot of seed that just got planted, a lot of corn and bean seed that's just waiting uh, to get germinated out there um, from the last week and a half or so. So I think this will certainly help and, and help uh, those or those uh, small grains and our pasture and forage too, you know, looking at the pasture lands, grazing areas, um, you know, every drop counts here. But yeah, I don't, I don't know that I call it a drought buster. And the one risk you run to with the heavier kind of thunderstorm activity is that it can generate a lot of runoff as well. So it doesn't necessarily directly benefit the field that it falls on, unfortunately. You kind of uh, led me into my next question there. That's where I was going anyway. Um, I had talked with someone in Oklahoma just a few days ago about how things had totally turned on their head. They had been extremely dry. The pastures were drying up. Now they've had like seven or eight inches of rain. And uh, the pastures all of a sudden are getting very lush. All kinds of uh, hay production is possible now. Um, in your area, I just wondered what the pastures look like there right now. Yeah, yeah, you're right in Oklahoma. They had a big deluge right at the end of April, I think like the last day of the month. Uh, yeah, up here, we're starting to turn on the dry side. And uh, unfortunately, you know, there are even areas that had average or maybe a little wetter conditions in April, which is historically uh, one of our best indicators for summer forage production. Um, is April moisture. And so even those areas, though, that I think got really good moisture in April are, are starting to turn a little dry. We've had um, multiple days of red flag high fire danger warnings right now. We have seen a number of fires on the eastern side of the state, which is the prairie grass area, more of the cropland area um, here over the last couple of days. And so I think that's a sign that um, that, that vegetation is drying out. It's kind of unusual to see the high fire danger. I'm talking to my wildland fire colleagues, um, some of the indexes, the, the data that they look at, this is like 90th percentile, you know, some of the highest fire danger that they've seen this time of year in that in that landscape. And so, yeah, if you look at, look at those kinds of things, I think uh, the, the forages, grazing areas um, are struggling a little bit. And uh, we've had some days with really high evapotranspiration rates, some days with really high water losses with these really warm conditions, highs in the 90s, winds in the 20, 30, 40 mile an hour range pretty consistently here for a couple days. So all that points to worsening drought conditions. Um, so we really need that rain to kind of shut things off and, and get on a new track. The word of the year when it comes to meteorology seems to be momentum. I keep hearing time and time again that there's just a lack of momentum, no momentum in these uh, frontal systems that come through. It's like the jet streams are really weak and they're in weird places this year, aren't they? Yeah, we kind of are just getting kind of episodes, you know, um, nothing really consistent yet. Um, not too unusual to see in the summer season. Uh, here in the Northern Plains region, North Central States, 
our summertime moisture comes from the south, looking at southerly winds from the Gulf of Mexico or Gulf of America. So it's you know we're looking at uh, really when can we when will that pattern consistently change to bring that southerly moisture up our way? Um, and you were against strong southerly winds, but it's really just bringing the wind right now and not really bringing the moisture just yet. Sounds like a big fear would be if uh, the water off of the west coast would remain cool. A lot of times that spells danger for the plains. And uh, so far, it seems like that might be a tendency this year. We also, you know, we've been looking at La Nina, um, which is now, you know, I think basically neutral conditions now. It's no longer really a factor. Uh, but I looked at some historical data looking at summers following La Nina winters. And more often than not, we see dry and warm conditions here in the north central, especially the Dakotas, um, which points to drought again uh, commonly after La Nina winter. So I don't know if that's really a correlation um, or, you know, if one causes the other necessarily, uh, but oftentimes we do see drought following La Nina. So... Uh, unfortunately, I think we have multiple things against us as far as, you know, hope in improving or not improving the drought condition. Well, that seems to agree with uh, some of the long range, like 60 to 90 day weather outlooks that I've seen. They still keep painting almost the entirety of the plains, including the southern plains um, in the brown category. In other words, a, a strong lack of moisture this summer. Yeah, that's right. That's been very consistent over multiple months back, always, all, looking all the way back towards last fall. Uh, it's been very consistent. Multiple models and other, you know, forecasters that dry conditions are more likely to prevail this summer and, and through the growing season, looking all the way to harvest to October, you know, and and so that's that's really difficult. Um, really hoping that people are, are taking this information to heart and, and planning ahead. I know on the cropping side, maybe not so much you can do. You plant your crop and oftentimes you have crop insurance to help cover if you have a loss. But looking more on the livestock side, managing your water, your grass, you know, your hay, um, you know, if you need to move cattle or sell, like those are all considerations I think people should really be thinking about and planning for uh, in the event that they do have to make some of those really difficult decisions. Well, quick question before I let you go. Uh, how's the wheat looking up in uh, South Dakota? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, some of that moisture in April really helped the winter wheat. Uh, spring wheat's coming up, um, and, I, you know, it's looking a little dry out there, but... Um, but I think there's still a lot of hope left for that. Uh, you know, around here, people joke that wheat has nine lives. So <laughs> I don't think time is out on that yet. We're not giving up on that yet. Uh, and some of that just got planted a few weeks ago, as recently as, you know, a few weeks ago. So, uh, we, I, I think spring wheat's okay. Winter wheat is kind of, you know, hit or miss depending where you're at. Well, Laura, thanks for the time. I always enjoy talking with you, and uh, thank you for the update on what's going on in the Northern Plains. Fingers crossed that the weather will defy the odds and get back to normal sometime this year. Um, but uh, anyway, I appreciate the help, and uh, good luck this growing season. Laura Edwards with us. She's the South Dakota State, uh, state Climatologist, and uh, appreciate you joining us for today's episode as well. For producer Brianne Jenkins, I'm Marlon Bowling, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Comstock Channel. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial, and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.